For more on the legal fallout from all of this, joining us now is immigration attorney Francisco Hernandez. So what do you think Hi, about... How are you? Uh, thank you for joining us. What do you think about this solution, potential solution, of having a shorter time period, maybe 72 hours, you have the hearing down on the border. Does that solve the problem or no? Uh, it doesn't solve the problem. You've got to pass a bill to get, try to get this done. Really, the, the solution is much more simple. The problem here is the Pottery Barn rule applies. We broke it, now we buy it. The pro all we have to do is give out one year uh, worker permits, renewable year to year, for them to show up and renew, show their, their paying taxes, and then they can process their asylum application in due course. There's no reason to rush. Do you guys realize how much it's costing us to house all these adults and children? Just put a dollar value to that, it's going to run us into, it's going to cripple us into paralysis. E educate us on what goes on down at the border since you are an immigration attorney. We have these sure. 10,000 kids that are in custody that did not arrive here with their parents. What happens to them? Well, it's what I call the baby's Moses, okay? Just as you earlier commented, parents do prefer that their children be up here, even in foster care, rather than a lawless nation like Honduras, where adolescent boys and girls are being drafted into the cartels and the criminal gangs. So in a sense, yes, they are sending them, and under existing law, these children, if they're classified as victims of child trafficking, they can get their papers here. We've got to deal with it. The problem is that once they get to the border, there is no turning back. By the time these folks get to the border, they've already paid the smugglers. People have already made sacrifices. There is no turning back. We've got to address this at the source in the right. source countries and figure out a way to keep people from wanting to come to the promised land. You can't blame them once they get here. Well, keep, keep them from wanting to come to the promised land. I mean, they want to come because you just said that they're sitting in a country where their lives are threatened and they're getting drafted into drug cartels how do we yes. how do we make how do we fix the legal immigration system to respect people who want to come to this country who are in difficult circumstances and would be yes. good citizens Yes. Well, we, the, the, and this is the biggest misconception under the law is we believe that there's a line forming where people can apply to come here legally to do these labor jobs. We are in a s severe labor shortage. We need the manual labor. The problem is there is not a system where these folks can come and apply legally. A bad asylum, political asylum process, the system is actually a legal way. It's not a loophole. It's the law. It's a bad law. It needs to be fixed. I agree, but it's the only way they can do it. So what, what uh, does and it's that the look like, though? If they, were to to, if they were to sit down and write something, what does it look like to have to help people come to this country legally? Who uh, President Trump yeah. always says, "We want people. We need people. We want the right people. We want to be choosy." Yes. How do you do that yeah. physically? You you get uh, physically you get you uh, you establish a process where an employer can apply in interview we've got a somewhat h2b system but there's only 30 or 60,000 visas issued per year okay you expand that okay but both parties are going to oppose that because it's not a politically uh, 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 saucy or, or salty uh, solution. The, sim the best solutions are the simplest. There is either a job or there's not. You either paid your taxes or you didn't. You make it a year-to-year -year renewal. That way they don't feel like they have to bring their, their wives and their children over here. The, the, you know, the, the breadwinner can come to the country, make money, go back, rebuild the country. And that's how you destroy the criminal element at the source country. Because if people have a way of making a living, educating their children, creating a better life in their source country, they won't have to join the gangs. It will disable the gangs. Interesting. Francisco Hernandez, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you.